What do you think about this thing, huh? Pretty sweet, isn't it? Yep. It's cold outside. We're sitting on the front porch and I don't know about you, but I sure could uh, use a cup of hot coffee, couldn't you? I, I could go for some hot coffee right now. What do y'all think we see what this bell here is for? What do y'all... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> my. Thank you all. Thank you. Coffee on uh, delivery around here. This is better than Uber. Yes, <laughs> So guys, we took and first started off by cutting your legs out of these 4x4 four four pine untreated posts. And the client wanted the table 32 inches tall, so we cut the post at 30 and a half inches. And with your tabletop on there, it'll be 32 inches. Then we got and cut our apron boards. And you know how I know those are called apron boards? I looked it up on Google. I was just calling them. I don't remember what I was calling them. But they're technically called apron boards, the boards that run on the sides underneath the tabletop and uh, I'm sure some people out there is like me and didn't know that so now you know I took and drilled pocket holes in every one of the apron, apron boards for the table if I could get that spit out right and after we had a uh, seemed like a hundred pocket holes drilled and all the pieces and parts we set the legs up and it started looking like a table pretty quick I took some scrap 2x4s and maybe these little jigs where I could hold the apron boards and start the screws by myself. And here you can see me doing that. Those jigs worked out really good for this. And uh, I, I actually put them on the shelf and keep those things around for future builds. You can just set the board right on those little jigs and get your apron boards lined up and get them good and square and uh, screw them right on. Sorry for the blurriness here, guys. I actually started this time lapse before I let the camera focus. All right, guys, I almost got the frame done. If you see here, on these four by four posts that you get these days, the edges of all of them are pretty much barked. What I mean is they're not square corners. And that's okay for the farmhouse look because you want it to look rustic and old but that way that there's not like a weird gap where the runner two by four runner meets the four by four post i just set those in about three eighths of an inch it makes it just look more symmetrical here's the top view you can see how they're just set in three eighths to a quarter inch and I just pocket hold them. I made them little 90 degree jigs to hold them there. I'm doing it by myself. And I'll probably go ahead actually and uh, put probably three two by fours across. One in the middle and then divide the space up. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Here guys, you can see I got those center supports in. Since we're doing this rustic farmhouse thing, I am going to take the Sawzall and uh, beat this thing up some. I'm just going to get the oldest, most wore out wood bit I got. You can see that thing. It's, uh, it's done its due diligence. It's wore out. And we're going to beat this thing up some. When the client says rough it up, we'll rough it up. Walk 20 volt cordless random orbital sander, some sandpaper, and I'm going to go over it fast. I want it to be where it don't have splinters sticking up. I want to go over it where it don't have splinters sticking up, and uh, 
but I want to leave all those teeth marks. Alright guys, so I got the table frame done. I roughed it up, went over it with a sander pretty good. And now, I am going to start on the bench. The client has ordered a 8 foot by 36 inch table, 32 inches tall. And then one bench to match the table. So I have two 2 by 10 by 8s. We'll cut those down to 82 inches wide. I first started off by cutting them down to length and then you will see in just a second I run the inside of both of them through the table saw to get a good nice square edge on them. So here I am guys the next day and I am sanding off this bench top. I'm sanding off all the excess glue and uh, where I filled those holes with the sawdust and wood glue. Uh, there's a good tip out there if you don't know it to uh, put a little wood glue in a hole and then dab it full of sawdust, let it dry and sand it off and it pretty much disappears. It looks really good. And then I roughed that top up with the sawzall and then I rounded it over with a quarter inch round over bit, bottom bearing mounted quarter inch round over bit on my trim router. Put a nice round edge on that bench top. And then I got straight to making the legs. I had some two by eights laying around and I cut them down to the height I wanted. And then I ripped the inside edge off of those. And I actually used my doweling jig to join these together. So I drilled the hose for the dowels. And I put some wood glue on them and put some dowels in and clamped these up and let them set overnight. So I think I owe it to you guys to explain to you. I, by the way, it's another day of building. I got home from work and get back on this farmhouse table project. I explain. I need to explain to you guys why there's a bunch of random painting on this base and the legs to the bench. That is because the client, when we was talking about this build, said I want it to look farmhouse and I want it to look rough. I want it to look like it's been painted a hundred times and beat up is what he, it is, I believe was his exact words. So I took a little charcoal gray stain, hit it here and there, and he said he liked that farmhouse like teal blue. So I got some spray paint of that. We went around and just painted here, there, and everywhere. And uh, it is what it is now. And now, uh, before I do the actual painting and staining of the top, we got to build the top. He also ordered some end tables. So before I do any uh, final painting with the white paint over all this, and then I'll rough it back up, I'm going to uh, go ahead and build my top and build my end tables. I want to get that stuff done, and then I'll clean this shop up all the sawdust everywhere. And after we get it good and clean, then I'll spray this thing with paint. I'll hang some plastic up and spray it with paint. But before then, we need to clean this place up 
Uh, so I want to do everything that I got to do as far as building and making sawdust because you, sawdust and painting something don't mix. Uh, you can't get a, well she wants it to look rough in farmhouse, but at the end of the day I want it to look good. Your name goes with your work. So uh, what I'll do is do all the building stuff first and then we'll do the painting. I must say, it looks pretty funny right now, but it'll look good when we get done. We'll paint all this white, and then we'll come back over it with some sandpaper, like some 220 sandpaper, and hit it here and there, and it'll show some of the blue through, show some of the gray through, and uh, it'll really come out looking good. Trust me, guys. And I'm actually not done with these legs. We're going to cut a little decorative circle in the bottom of them, kind of like some old school furniture was. Uh, it's going to look good when we get finished, though. So here we are getting started on the tabletop and the boards. I'm going to have eight boards, four and a half inches wide, and I use a two by six. Cut a half inch off one edge, and then I cut a half inch off the other, and that leaves me with four and a half inch board. So they all get ran through the table saw twice. And if you haven't seen my video on how to make a tabletop look rustic or make a smooth board look rustic, I believe is the name of it, you guys look in the video description below and I will leave a link to that. And here I am randomly throwing sawdust on myself. For some reason, I keep doing that. I don't understand why, but you know, video purposes I guess you could say I hit that like button because I did just do that because you know sawdust gets everywhere and it's actually no fun to do it but I continue to keep doing it so you guys hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you would go ahead and throw a plug in for that so the wife and girls come out and join me and after I got those roughed up you should definitely watch that video in the description on how i did that after you watch this one and uh, i joined four of those at a time pocket hold them together and wood glue them so instead of me trying to do all eight of them at once I like i hope you understand that i did four boards and then four more and let those dry and then i joined those two pieces together the next day And here I'm just filling those pocket holes with those pocket hole plugs you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot. I think you can get them at Home Depot. I know you can get them at Lowe's. And uh, a little bit of sawdust to fill the other knots and such with some wood glue. So guys, I just got home from work. We're getting ready to take these two tops and glue them together. I glued those boards together four at a time. I ripped them down to four and a half inches wide, and uh, that's eight boards total, 36 inch wide tabletop. So let's go ahead and get these things glued together and uh, make this tabletop.
Hey guys, we're back working on this farmhouse table, bench, and end tables. We're gonna to try to paint them this evening, and right now we're getting ready to cut out these circles in the bottom of these bench legs. Uh, just gonna use a jigsaw to do that, and I used a paint can to mark it out. I just set it up there on the halfway point and marked out that circle, and we're gonna go ahead and cut it. If I can figure out how to use this thing. So I got one of these little flap nests that go on the drill here, and I'll just clean this up and smooth it out with it. Need to clamp it back down first. So guys, I got the plastic up over here. I'm gonna to try to stand on this side over here and spray towards this way. So if any, hopefully what I'm thinking is most of the overspray will go this way. I know I'll get some on some stuff, but I don't think it'll be too awful bad. We got the Wagner spray gun and uh, I'll get over here and see what we can do with it. Guys, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll, I'll get back with you here in a little bit once I get some more done. The building is so small, it's kinda of hard to video and paint at the same time. Thank y'all for watching. Painting is now complete. So this base and these legs for the bench, I will be taking sandpaper and beating that nice paint up after it dries, cause he wants them to look rough and rustic. Which that looks good. I see what he's going for, but these end tables, they'll stay just regular painted. He don't want them beat up. I think it turned out beautiful. Next project will be, that's the back side, but staying in the front side of the table top, staying in the front side of the bench top. And, uh, just putting these and the end table tops, I'm putting this thing together and it'll be done.
So I'm getting ready to uh, stain all of these at once, hopefully. Uh, let me show you guys what I'm doing. I'm gonna be trying to stain the tabletop, the bench top, both end tabletops, and the lower sections for the end tables. I'm gonna try to stain all of those at once. The stain that the client chose is a Minwax Semi-Transparent Honey 272 for the color. And we're using a premium water-based polycrylic crystal clear top coat. That will be in a clear matte finish. We don't want nothing shiny on this thing. But with that, guys, let's get to staining. It's about six o'clock in the morning and I got the second coat on everything. First coat on I got out the first coat I got on about eleven last night. And then I came out this morning at six and lightly sanded it with two twenty grit sandpaper and put the next coat on. So after I went around and beat it up there, guys, I have this curve cut, looks like a mini saw blade, a curve cut, curve fluff fluff, a curve cut bottom bearing mounted router bit. And I got some tabletop Z fasteners that I'm gonna fasten the top to the base. I'm gonna put this in my router and go around and cut me some notches or I want to put a fastener, so, you know, here, 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 all the way around it, cut me some notches to put fasteners in. And this thing, this thing cuts a, from the bearing to the outside of the tooth, it cuts a little over three eighths, almost nine sixteenths. Well, close to half an inch, actually. Between nine sixteenths and a half an inch is what that'll cut deep. That'll be plenty. Thanks to the father-in-law for giving, or let me borrow this. I don't know if he gave it to me or not. But yeah, let me borrow it. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to buy one. Because that's cool. So we cut us a trial hole here, and what we'll do is, we'll get us a fastener, and we'll act like this is our tabletop, and we're going to fasten this, turn it around so you spect spectators can see it. That's perfect. Talking about perfect. Just a little bit high, that way when I screw it down, it'll turn it. Pull it nice and tight. Oh, that's good. And it makes me happy. Let's cut some holes in this thing. Very carefully cut some holes in it.
Hey, how did the wife, guys? Thanks for helping, baby. Thanks for helping. I got you. I got you on camera. So guys, these uh, Z clips come with these little bitty like half inch screws and those are fine for like a small uh, coffee table, whatever. This big old uh, dining room table, I don't trust those little screws. So I'm gonna put these one inch and then, you know, there's plenty of room left. They're not gonna go through it. Put these one inch Tag jig screws in. So you just slide these in the hole, just like so. And do that several more times. <laughs> Beautiful. That's all I know to say sometimes. Beautiful. So here I'm marking out where my legs are going to go on my bench, and then I have to sand that stain back off. In hindsight, 2020, if I would have thought about it, I should have marked that out first and not stained where that should have been because wood glue don't stick to stain so i had to get back down to fresh wood that way that the uh, wood glue would stick and i just took and put some pocket hose right in those legs and after i screwed them on i touched a pocket hose up with paint and unless you're a very small person who lays down under benches you'll never see those pocket hose after i touched them up with paint Then I just attach those to the actual bench top itself. And I, each, each leg has six two and a half inch pocket hole screws in it. And then there's the paint. Just touching up all the, uh, where I drilled those holes for the pocket holes. completion of this farmhouse table build. Uh, the client that I've been talking about all along would be my good buddy Taylor. Uh, he drove all the way from Harrodsburg today to pick this up and uh, surprised his wife with it. Uh, kind of like a Valentine's Day present I guess you'd say. And uh, we appreciate him purchasing this from us and 
We tried to do a good job and they were well pleased as far as I can tell. I've already got up on this bench and jumped up and down and held 230 pounds or so. And it's holding about 600 right now. Yeah, we're both growing boys for sure. <laughs> but I appreciate y'all watching today. And uh, we just wanted to end this with the client being in it since we're good friends. And uh, let you guys see who bought this table and let you see his reaction to it firsthand. I mean, it was a lot of work. And I think I had around 40 hours in the entire build. But I wanted it to look nice. I wanted it to be right. Spent a lot of time to make sure it was that way and make sure it met their expectations. But... I do appreciate y'all watching. Man. Y'all have a good one. We're going to enjoy this cup of hot coffee. and, Like always, God bless. Have a good day. <laughs>